All right, YouTube. So I'm on the edge of the riverbed here. Uh, the river is directed that way. It's about three or four hundred yards. This is called the riverbed basin. It's a uh, it's owned by the state of Kansas and the Cherokee and the Choctaw and the Creek Nation. It's all public land. You want to research your land before you go out and get on it. <clears throat> Make sure you know what your hunting regulations are and everything. Um, this area is bow hunting only. It's a small buff shot for duck and fowl. But there's no rifle hunting in this area allowed. Um, but as far as all my state regulations are, I can I can bow hunt it. So right over here, we are going to uh, cut a trail, and then we're going to cut it back towards that area. You can see that area back right there. I know there's some hogs and some coyotes down in there. And that's kind of primarily what I'm hunting right now. Um, <clears throat> I don't have my deer license. I got my hunting license, but I don't have my deer license. So this year I'm not doing any deer hunting. I'm going to spot a few, but I'm not going to hunt any. Uh, probably going to wait till next year. I've had some medical issues, and I'd show you my back, but it's horrific. I just had a surgery done, so it, it was rough. But I'm gonna record and show you what it's like cutting a trail because part of hunting is cutting the trail. You have to cut a good trail. You wanna be able to get in and out and set up on your stand or set up on your blind or however you're gonna hunt it. So anyways, um, I'm gonna show you guys some of the tools you're going to need to do this kind of stuff. Okay, YouTube. So, first of all, this is my Skinner blade. This is my last primary weapon. This is my main weapon in the woods. Uh, I was cutting some wax with it earlier today, but um, anyways... That's what I use to carve my animals. I also use it to make bows and things like that. Um, <clears throat> this is my skinner. And it sits on my right hip. Now the reason why I say you need that is for defense. You never know what's in these woods. This is my primary trail cutter. I'm using, today I'm using the Calamus Titanium Machete. It's also got the, uh, the chainsaw blade on the back in case I want to trim down any very small trees that I don't, I can't hack through. Most of them will hack through, this thing will hack through just about anything. It is bad. Let's keep going. That's also a primary source of defense. In case you run into a bear or anything else that you don't want to run into, so. Okay, guys, the last thing you're going to need, well, I mean, it ain't the last thing, but one of the things you need to scope your area. Because when you, when you cut your trail, you're going to need one of these. Okay. You want a glass? These areas back in here? Right. All down in there. You can kind of start seeing where the river shows up. Where the water basins are. And you're going to want a glass all the way back down in there. And then you're going to, when you get down in the water beds, you're going to want to look for the sign of the animal. But these will come in handy. These will help you get there first. You know, bam. I can see 400 yards. Very important. Um, so like right now, I could glass 
I'm gonna go ahead and glass this whole river valley right here. And the main thing you want to do is pick a point where you can't see where you're standing. And use your glasses to find that point. Okay. Because there could be animals sitting right there. You just don't know it. I mean, it's vitally important when you're hunting. Okay. One of these. Okay, guys. So, I wanted to go over, you know, equipment and gear and all that. Obviously, you don't want some cameras. You know, something that brings you. Um, a hat, maybe. Camoed hat. I have a couple of them. You're also going to want a good pair of hunting boots. Uh, preferably camo. The black ones kind of stick it. Not real big on the cheap ones. But <clears throat> I have some black ones, but I use them for gold money. But I wanted to show you this little part of the trail here. So I cut the trail. That right through there. It goes all the way up the hill to the main parking lot. I'm just cutting the trail down to where it's easy to get to. Okay, and then I came to this point right here. Okay, there's just tall grass and some uh, all these little. Uh, bamboo shoots or whatever, grass sprouts or whatever they're called. It's like wild river cones or something. Anyways, um, I wanted to, I wanted you to see this. The reason why you need a good pair of boots is because where the trail comes to, to the riverbed here, okay, right here, um, there's this hill, and it's like a muddy embankment right here. Right here, it starts right here, and it goes down. Okay, it's like a mudslide, okay? And you need a good pair of boots to get up these kinds of mudslides. That's the only problem when you're hunting down by the river. Um, you're gonna have water basin areas, and you're going to have hills with mudslides. And it's vitally important that you can get up and get back down without killing yourself in the wood. Okay? So that's another vital important part of hunting. Now, when we get down here in the river basin, I'm going to slide down this little slide. It's kind of dry right now, so I ain't real worried about it. But when it's raining, these things are slick and you'll get trapped. You won't be able to get back up the hill very easy. You'll find a way, but it's it's tricky sometimes. And you just have to work around these kinds of things when you're hunting, okay? Now, once I get down here, I'm gonna show y'all, we're gonna do some tracking. Okay, now that I'm down here, you can kinda see where I'm at. It's the sandy water base. Uh, it's part of the river. When the river flies, this area is underwater. But right now, I'm just kind of looking for easy access areas. Whew. Gotta watch for the yellow jackets. Ah, here we go. This is where you're gonna find out what animals you got. Let me turn the camera around. Now what that tells you is these animals are running all through this base. Okay. It tells you what kind of animals you got. If there's any big predators, you'll see some big cat prints. You'll see some big dog prints. And that's vitally important. You don't want to be stuck down in one of these river basins by yourself hunting up against a big cat or a big dog. There are creatures in these woods that will get you. 
and they're ugly. So, anyways, I'm gonna follow these tracks. I'm gonna, they're just all over. I mean, everywhere I'm stepping. You can see them right there. They're just everywhere. So they cut through this one area where the water's a little bit more shallow. You can see all those tracks. You can see them all through here. They're all cutting through the same area where they're not sinking into the mud. They're coming up to a water source right here. Boom. At this point, they're getting their water, taking a drink, slowing down from their runs from the coyotes and, and the cats and the dogs. Well, there's wolves probably. Wouldn't surprise me. I've seen wolves in Oklahoma. You can say there ain't no wolves in lower 48. Bullshit. Um, you're a fool if you don't think there's any wolves. We have gray wolves in this state. Um, and they hunt just like any other pack of wolves. You get up in their territories and in these kinds of areas, you might not make it back. So it's vitally important to, to, to scout the area first. That's what I'm doing today. I'm scouting areas. And that'll give you an indication of what you're up against. Should I bring a pistol with 45 caliber? How big are these animals? Just for self-defense, okay? There could be a big creature in here. You never would know it. And the damn thing you might want to eat you. I've seen big rogue pit bulls down in these areas. Uh, people losing their dogs, and then the dog just starts hunting on the river. And they eat everything, man. They eat human. You get, you get up with a couple packs of uh, wild pit bulls, and you, you could be in big trouble, dude. That's why I say... And I'm, I'm going to stress this point. Don't come out here without one of these. Because you need it. There's no ifs, ands, buts about it. Last resort. You're going to chop that motherfucker. Anyways. Thanks for watching. I'm going to try and conclude the video pretty soon. I might get a couple more clips in here. We'll see what happens. But. I'm not making this video super long. This is just a scouting video um, showing you how to find tracks. Oh, this is weird right here. This is a big dog print right here. This is concerning. Let me show you this one. That is a big dog print. And for reference, put my foot up there. You can see how big that paw is. You can see its claws, its paw tracks, all of its claw marks, everything. Look at it from up here, you'll see it real close. Now his paw, probably, my foot's 12 inches, so. I'm saying five and a half, six inch paw. There's more of them. There's one right there. There's another one right there. You can see it. That's a big dog. Okay, guys. It's no bullshit. I just can't stress enough, man. It's no bullshit. Um, I've seen things in the woods. That you wouldn't think existed. Some people call them Sasquatch. Some people call them Dogman. And I've seen them. And they're real. I've seen them in this area. And that's actually why I'm hunting this area. Um, there's a pack of them there across the river. In a little county. And I'm not going to say the name on camera. But... <laughs> It's next to a pretty large suburban in type area, but the smaller town isn't. It's more of a just a run down, broken down old farm town. And that old farm town, I'm telling you, is probably infested with wolves and dogmen and possibly Sasquatch. I do not know. Um, all I can say is, is 
you don't want to risk getting caught down in one of these river basins without a weapon. So keep that in mind and stay sharp, you know what I mean? That's all I can say, stay sharp. Because hunters go missing all the time. It is a reality because they are in the woods more than most people. And if they are not prepared for what's out there, you're basically a meal for a giant animal. And even a 250 pound man, I'm 256 pounds. I'm a big fat son of a bitch. You know what I mean? I'm big and husky and I'm strong. But even for a guy my size, you know, it's no match for a 500 pound, you know, 500 pound beast that can growl at you and make you piss your pants, okay? A 500 pound beast. I mean, these things could come right around the corner right now. You see that? See that area right there? They could be just sitting there watching me. You know what I'm saying? So, I can't express, you know, the importance of knowing what you're up against. Go out and do your scouting. Go out and do your tracking. You have to learn these things before you go. Jump up in a stupid ass tree thinking I'm going to get a 15, 16, 18 point deer. Okay? It ain't all about the fucking trophy, man. It's it's for real. It's real life. It's survival. Okay, guys? That's important. It's survival. One last thing. One last thing, guys. See you tell you about Yay B. Mark your trails. Just put a couple of notches in it like that. I'll tell you what direction you need to be walking. You'll see that and go, yeah, that's where I marked that tree. I remember that. Okay. Put a couple marks up in there. Just like that. You'll know. Those are your marks. So when you're walking out, you don't get confused like how oh, I can't remember where the trail is. There's a big tree right there. I'll probably mark that one the next time. And then there's a couple trees over there. I'll probably mark. Just to be safe, 